Our three heroes, Radagast, Hossopad, and Cuthbred, quickly made their way across the Westfall to the Deeping Combe, the great valley that stretched before the three mountain peaks of Thryhirn, where the fortress of the Hornburg stood. It was midday, and the sun shone brightly in the sky. Radagast paused for a moment within their approach and examined the land and its surroundings. Oh no, this will not do. This will not do at all. If the orcs come in great numbers, which I believe they will, we will be trapped as wheat to be cut for the harvest. We shall make our stand here within these open trees and find refuge in the forest if we must. The orc army would not arrive for at least another day. This gave Radagast time to prepare accordingly for the warfare that loomed before them. The wizard summoned birds from the sky, beasts of the forest, and also those that delved in the ground in as great a number as could be had. The sun soon descended into the west behind the plateau of Gorgoroth. The stars were veiled as a covering of clouds spawned a blinding darkness akin to the devices of Mordor. Radagast and his newfound allies hid quietly within the neighboring wood. A slow time passed. Far down in the valley, scattered fires still burned. The hosts of Isengard were advancing in silence now. Their torches could be seen winding up the coom in many lines. Suddenly, from the dike, yells and screams, and the fierce battle cries of men broke out. Flaming brands appeared over the brink and clustered thickly at the breach. Then they scattered and vanished. The enemy extinguished their torches and continued their advance, unseen in the black of night. The orcs will have the element of surprise if they cannot be seen. But we will be compromised. It must be done. Throne brand hail fun fear! Suddenly the clouds were seared with a blinding flash. Branched lightning smote down upon the eastward hills. For a starting moment, the watchers on the wall saw all the space between them and the dike lit with white light. Thunder rolled in the valley. Rain came lashing down. Ever and again, the lightning tore aside the darkness. The lightning flashed and blazoned upon every helm and shield. The ghastly hand of Isengard was seen. But alas, Radagast had exposed himself to the rear flank of the massive horde of orcs. They charged upon his position with hateful wrath. Hossipad, Cathbred, to battle! Hossipad sprung forth from the darkened wood, leading a large herd of giant redland deer. They mowed through the advancing orcs and trampled them down as if trimming tall grass. Cathbred led an innumerable flock of hawks, falcons, ravens, and all manner of avian predators high into the air, so thick they blocked the flashing light of the raging storm. They descended upon the horrid enemy from above with fierce speed, attacking the helms and blinding their foes. Grund, Geshef, Kuma! All manner of small creatures rose up from within the ground, rats and mice, squirrels and gophers and the like. They moved as a single thick mass, covering the lower extremities of the perplexed orcs, dragging them into the ground, entombing them yet alive. Many orcs were able to break the ranks of the oncoming animal attackers and fled into the wood. Radagast would not have it. Beowulf, Verhund, Vildeor! To their utter terror and surprise, the rage of the bear, the wolf, and other beasts of Middle Earth met the rear hordes of Isengard with deadly force. Within the flurry of attacking animals, five orcs broke from the group and surrounded Radagast. Tell me, gentlemen, do you know this one? The Truma Climbent Bedelfen! The surrounding flora sprang up from the forest floor, grasped the menacing orcs, and encased them to the ground at their feet. The battle raged on into the night. The emergent storm continued to lighten the darkened sky with a percussion of rolling thunder, as if cheering on the defenders of the Hornburg. Finally overwhelmed, the orcs to the rear broke off their attack as the trickery of Radagast and the valiant beasts proved formidable foes. The enemy retreated onto the open plains of the Westfold Vale. Realizing the orcs should not be allowed to escape and return to Isengard, Radagast walked within the midst of the wooded tree line, placed his staff upon a large oak, and began to hum. Harmonic-filled music penetrated the air and resonated from tree to tree until the entire forest was singing in a mass harmony. As the cracking of thunder that rang earlier in the night sky, numerous trees began to move with startling grace and speed into the open field before them. Their roots moved through the porous ground with the appearance of spiders swimming along their webs. They were the Hern, wild ants from ages past who hated orcs above all other creatures. The land had changed, 
where before the green dale had lain, its grassy slopes lapping the ever-mounting hills, there now a forest loomed. Great trees, bare and silent, stood, rank on rank, with tangled bow and hoary head. Their twisted root were buried in the long green grass. No orc would escape them. The battle had ended. The vile beasts of Isengard were thwarted. The warriors and the people of Rohan emerged from the Hornburg and began the long trek back to their homes. Radagast, exhausted from the knight's errand, slept at the base of a tree, surrounded by his many animal friends and allies. The sun's rays shone brightly as if cradling him with such peaceful slumber. He awoke with a start to find that he had been joined by none other than his young eagle companion, Fern. Fern, my dear friend, I am pleased to see you have healed most quickly. What brings you here at this most joyous time? <coughs> Two halflings and something about a ring, you say. Lead on. Radagast climbed upon his faithful steed, Hossapad, and they darted off westward across the open plain, following Farn with Cathred, as always, close behind. And thus is the end of this telling of the untold adventures of Radagast the Brown, at least for now.